Back in 2017, a guy broke off a piece of a terracotta soldier at a museum, and he just got finally sentenced. But a lot of people are calling for harsher punishment, and here's why. Philadelphia, how will you like it if we come over there and then we crack the Liberty Bell again? And then I put it in my pocket and hide it for years. <laughs> David, what if he was trying to do this trick, but then it actually just happened? Ah! Um, guys, from silly to serious, I'm gonna say that this is uh, in the middle, but it's kind of serious because this has to do with like how much Americans do or do not respect 2,200 year old relics on loan from other countries, right? Mm -hmm. And this sparked a ton of different discussions and there's even some geopolitical implications for it. So make sure wow. you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. Real quick, we gotta talk about something else from somewhere near the Xi'an region. We're talking about Smala, Andrew from Sichuan to Sicily. You can get this sauce at smalasauce.com right now, Andrew. Um, People are really gonna enjoy it on a lot of Eastern and Western items. Yeah, it's super high quality. It contains real truffle, lots of umami, Sichuan peppercorns, gives you that nice little tingle in the back of your mouth. And also it being in a squeeze bottle, it's super easy to use and super easy to clean. So check it out, smalasauce.com. And real quick, what happened at this museum in Philadelphia, man? All right, so they're having an ugly sweater Christmas party at some part of the museum. But anyways, he escapes that party. He's drunk. He goes into the terracotta soldier exhibit it's, it's closed off he breaks in yeah and then he's taking a bunch of pictures and then he breaks off a thumb thinking it's funny and then he tucks it away in his little pocket and then he scurries on out of there and then they don't realize it's gone for like two weeks but by the way guys if you don't think this is a big deal stealing a piece off of a museum item something like that that is insured at like 4.5 million dollars is a big deal. Yes. I mean, irreversible damages. It is one of the few fully re uh, restored terracotta figures that is called the Calvary Man. From th and they put it together from thousands of different fragments from the tomb of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, who united the nation under his rule in the third century BC. Andrew, most famously, Qin Shi Huang is the emperor they gently did not kill and hero because he wanted a unified China to stop the warring states, period. But more famously... You kind of look like this terracotta soldier. Yes. Yeah, if you look at, look at, just giving me a serious look. Give it in the camp. I don't know, man. Yeah, was <laughs> I there to help Qin Shi Huang achieve immortality? Dude, are you a reincarnation of a terracotta soldier? That would make a lot of sense. Anyways, uh, 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 yeah. 2,200 years ago, Andrew, a lot of people don't know that he also buried terracotta musicians and terracotta concubines with him. He, he was about the baddies in yeah, the afterlife. Yeah, these were all uh, statues, right? Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, I think actually surprisingly, this is one thing that both like kind of blue collar Americans could agree with everybody else on. Like, because usually when you bring up stories about China or things dealing with things from China- Right, in 2023, people, right? It's more only, negative. People only have negative things to say, but this time everybody's like, yeah, I agree, man. This guy should get harsher punishment. That was disrespectful. I can't believe people are still doing this. For sure. I think it goes along with the narrative right now that people feel like, man, America's going downhill. Nobody's getting punished for anything. You can just disrespect our culture, disrespect other cultures, and they just- Slap y'all on the wrist, man. David, one thing that I do want to talk about maybe later in the video is the possible geopolitical strains this put on things because the assistant U.S. attorney said on Wednesday during the sentencing, uh, Rohana may not have set out to spark an international incident, but his actions caused permanent damage to the cultural exchange between two nations. <laughs> Indiana Jones, Carmen San Diego. Let's get to the comments section. Somebody said... Man, this sounds like a Mr. Bean skit. I can't believe this guy got drunk. That was so Philly of him. What? Let me guess. He went to Pat's or Geno's before he got drunk mm. and took somebody's thumb. And um, his defense attorney was basically trying to characterize that he was not on Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12, like, masterminded thing. They were just like, ah, oh, come on. He's just a drunk guy. He's not a bad dude. He's just a shoe salesman in Delaware. He don't give put him in jail because right. uh, the whole thing carried up to 20 years. He ended up getting zero years. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said, wow, for once, I can't believe I agree with the CCP. And then other people were saying, man, just glue it back on, man. You know, all that stuff is fake from China anyway. And other people were just talking about, man, just send him back to China to get punished. I, I just can't believe everybody in America right now gets a slap on the wrist for everything. Um, what do you think about this comment? People are using this as a proxy for just like, 
that's things that are happening in their state or their town basically saying man my neighbor was like selling all these drugs and they just let them out too i can't stand it yeah i mean you know obviously in a way this isn't a violent crime but it's definitely some form of robbery you know and theft so it is like maybe it should be punished more i don't know i mean i guess they're probably thinking about it like yo if you throw this guy in jail you know for something that he did when he was drunk stealing a thumb then, you know, he's going to lose his career and his family and everything like that. So just give him five years probation. So I don't know, man. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I feel about the punishment. Should it be harder or not? Mm. Uh, a lot of people were saying if this would have been New York City, not only would that terracotta soldier have been under way stricter security, but he would have for sure got jail time because that's how they view like violations of museums in different cities. Right, right, like right. Like different cities value it more or less. Yeah, that's true, that's and true. And a lot of people are kind of drawing this to just the criminal justice system in general. They were saying, you know, there's some people doing like 30 years for weed in some states, Andrew, and they wouldn't even get arrested or get a criminal felony in other states. So people were just like, man, what's going on with just like uh, the variance and enforcement of the thing based on the county you committed in? Mm. Yeah, so this was almost like a commentary on the, I guess, just like the criminal justice system and sort of the standardization. Um, somebody, people were criticizing his statement. He made a final statement to the judge before sentencing where he was like really apologizing. They were like, man, finding huge respect for artifacts in the museum when you're about to get sentenced, it's just like all the murderers in prison finding religion, huh? Well, basically saying that like, obviously he was just saying it because he didn't want to go to jail. Right, right, right. Yeah, and then somebody was saying, man, Americans, this is why we're welcomed wherever we go. We got to be respectful of old, other cultures, conscientious about obeying laws and practice good sense in our dealing with others. Sarcasm. So this person was saying that when Americans go overseas, there's sort of this reputation that Americans act really crazy and don't respect other people's cultures that much. Right, right, right. I mean, would you agree or disagree with this? Because I would say that, there is some sense of like American bros doing that for sure. And Michael Roshana, by all means, seemed like a bro. Well, that's why, I don't know, you don't get people drunk at a museum because people wander off. I mean, that's part of the issue, right? I bet you this, he would not have desecrated the Eagles NFL Heritage Museum. Yeah, he probably is not going to try to steal the Vince Lombardi trophy or whatever. <laughs> no, hey, come on, man. I got more sense than that. I would never do something like that. You out of your mind? Um, Andrew, what are your takeaways? This is like a silly story, but it, it went pretty viral. And I was kind of surprised that this many people were like, throw the book at him, send him to China. That's why they don't got this type of crime in China because they'd take his thumb off for taking the terracotta soldier's thumb. And it was really interesting because I was like, it, it goes to the, back to this point that you always make where you're like, man, people... Like, they don't like China right now, or I guess the geopolitical rivalry, economic rivalry, the jostling for power, control of the East with America that they have. But they also like that China's really harsh on crime. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely, like, an aspect that um, there is some unity. I guess it's just nice to see people unified about a story. Hating that, on Michael Roshan. Yeah, a story that has to do with China, because usually it's always just only against China. Um, but, yeah, I do think that, it kind of turns into this whole like, man, like we need to punish people harsher in this country and things like that. And I guess that's the discussion. But overall, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you've heard people who have gone to Asia and desecrated certain things. Obviously, this is a statue that is inside an American museum. So he maybe he felt comfortable on his own turf. But uh, either way, I mean, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, everybody, you got to respect the museum. Like even in a time of war. You know, even in war, they don't go into the museum and destroy everything. If anything, you take it all and you load it up on the ship. You know what I mean? Like when you're like in a war and you take over a country, like usually people just at least steal the artifacts, but keep them in intact. Oh, you're saying because they even, even though it's still wrong to steal them, they're doing it because they see the value in it and not just destroying well, it. Well, at least just don't destroy it. Well, some people destroy it. it yeah. I guess it depends on which army we're talking about. Right, 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 right. right. But from what I heard, most most people, they, they try to, uh, you know, contain it. You know what's really interesting about this is it's like things from 2,000 years ago, people don't really include them in the modern geopolitical jousting. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like keep now, now, and like ancient things are almost like belong to human civilization. I feel like that's how the scientific and the arts community looks at it. Because, you know, obviously those things are from like... Uh, 2,000 years ago when people were not even aware of the existence of anybody else on earth. That's true. Yeah, so, hey, guys, it's good to see people just get together about something ancient, I guess. 
And that did, maybe that's just a commentary on how divided things are nowadays. Let us know what you think of this story in the comment section below. Keep it civil. And uh, yeah, for me, I, I, you know, the real job more versus the Philly cheesesteak. I, I don't know. I, I think I prefer the pork. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.